on top of that, I've also been thinking a lot about Alexei Navalny, RIP and Alexei Navalny, staunch critic of um, Vladimir Putin and that whole regime, strong anti-corruption politician. He might have his own skeletons in his own closet. I know there's some people out there who are hypothesizing that Alexei Navalny might have been an undercover CIA plant of some ilk or something. I don't really know where to kind of go with that sort of stuff. But regardless, he had balls of steel, way bigger balls of steel than I would have. He left um, Russia. He was able to kind of, you know, ex he kind of exiled himself. And then he voluntarily went back to face the music, knowing full well he was going to go to prison and knowing full well most likely he would never see um the outside of that prison again he kind of he kind of signed his own death warrant um for lack of a better term and having a wife i don't think he has a family to be fair so that might have helped um knowing that she's out there and kind of willingly putting himself in the line of that sacrificing himself for the greater good you have to give that guy a lot of credit you have to kind of respect him and you have to kind of just you know honor his legacy um of how you know depending no you have to kind of just honor the fact that he you know he was around and shit and just kind of take the whole instances as a kind of humbling um, occurrence to kind of remind you of how terrible things are out there. Um, especially if you're somebody like myself who kind of loves to moan a bit, um, you, you could be living in far worse places, right? Especially um, in a place like Russia. Well, to make things even scarier, to make things even scarier, look at this story courtesy of Sky News. Allies accuse Russian authorities of doing everything they can to avoid handing over his body to the family. So Russian authorities let it be known that Alexei Navalny died of some sort of natural causes. He had some sort of heart attack when he was walking in the yard and then he collapsed and the medics tried to help him. He wasn't responding and unfortunately passed away. Well, they didn't perform an autopsy yet or an official one. The family wanted to get the body back themselves to perform an autopsy or to, you know, basically um, be able to bury him. And the Russian authorities are purposely withholding, withheld, withholding the body from the family. So obviously, this kind of, you know, the immediate response would be like, oh, the reason why they're withholding is because something dodgy happened. So imagine that. Imagine a political opponent, a staunch political opponent, ends up dying in mysterious circumstances in prison. And instead of just releasing the body to the family, they're purposely withholding it, which probably means, most likely than not, don't be surprised if the body ends up getting cremated you know in in a mistake right in a procedural mistake some sort of accounting error some sort of paperwork you know malfunction leads to that body getting cre getting cremated i don't think they're going to be able to get the, that body intact in the way that they quite probably f hope they would i don't think so let's read the flipping article courtesy of sky news spokeswoman kira yamishi confirmed that mr navalny the most prominent face of the russian opposition for putin had died at the remote arctic penal colony on friday imagine how imagine what the conditions are like in a russian penal colony obviously they're always terrible anyway but imagine what it must be like to be serving out your sentence part of it in a russian penal colony imagine what kind of work are they making you do breaking bricks in half mining with your bare hands scooping one pile of snow to the other pile of snow can you imagine what you have to do in that kind of place god damn it she claimed the 47 year old had been murdered however she said lawyers of mr navalny had been told by authorities that no crime had been found following an investigation meanwhile mr navalny's mother um luyud luyud miller luyud miller on Saturday, he traveled to the prison where her son was being held up until his death. That's obviously Alexei Navalny there, looking far more healthy than the pictures that we saw of him in prison. She was told by prison officials that her son died on the 16th of February, 2017 local time as a result of sudden death syndrome, according to a prominent Navalny ally, Ivan Zadov. Sudden death syndrome. However, authorities have not yet released his body. His family and allies have also been driven around in circles, attempting to locate it according to to his mother she said mr navalny's mother had been told by a prison official that her son's body had been taken to the nearby city of salad of, of salak hard as part of a probe into his death that's obviously mr navalny's mother there but when she and mr navalny's lawyers arrived to the morgue it was closed and the worker said the body was not there <laughs> honestly man right and this is all on the backdrop right of tucker carlson going to russia and basically running propaganda for them Basically, he was trying to make it seem as if, oh, even though these guys live in an authoritarian country, the conditions are way better than they are here in the in the US, where he is. 
imagine being that kind of bold being that unashamed being that lacking in scruples that you go to your country's mortal enemies no you got you travel to the your country's mortal enemies country and you basically go and run propaganda for them and you know and espouse all the benefits that they have there of, of like cheap food and all this sort of malarkey it's like bruh okay fair enough you can get loads of groceries for a hundred dollars but do you really want to live in a do you really want to live in a non democratic country like that where if you do rise up and you are a legit you know uh, opposition to Putin's regime that you legitimately might get killed or you legitimately might put your rest of your family your friends in danger is that really a life worth living especially when you think about some of the protesters right these protesters went to go and do a silent vigil about Alexei Navalny to honor him right and his passing they put some flowers out somewhere just silently saying, not saying anything, not even chanting, not, nothing. And police pulled up and started dragging them all away from the vigil and started throwing them in the back of fucking trucks and shit. Can you imagine that? You can't even have a silent vigil just honouring somebody with some flowers and police arrest you. How long for? Imagine. God damn it. Hours later, Miss... Um, Yamishi said the lawyers have, for the politician were told that Navalny's body would not be handed over to his relatives until an investigation to his death had been completed. So the Russian authorities are refusing to hand over um, Navalny's body. The results will supposedly be available next week. It's obvious that they are lying and doing everything they can to avoid handing over the body. So either they're handing over, the, they, they, they're working on the body now, for lack of a better term, not to be crude, either they're working on it, trying to do what they can to change the autopsy results right i don't know how if that's possible i, I guess that you can do that post po, um po, post-mortem right you can probably um uh, or post death right you can probably damage the body to a way to kind of you know throw people off the scent of what actually happened so if somebody got strangled you could probably do something to the body to make it look like it wasn't a strangulation maybe it was a point whatever you can do something so that's probably what they're doing or most likely my my guess is that they'll probably end up cremating the body. The Russian authorities will find a way to fuck something up in the transport, cremate the body by, by quote unquote mistake, and then the thing, whole thing will just be swept under the rug. I think that's what they're going to try and do. She accused the investigation committee in Salakard of driving us around in circles and covering their tracks as only hours before they were told that the investigation had already been concluded and nothing criminal had been um, established. Here's obviously a vigil, a little thing honouring his death. Russian Federal Pen Penitentiary Services reported on Friday that Mr. Bani felt sick after a walk and became unconscious at the penal colony in the town of Karp in the Yamolo Nenets region, which is within the Arctic Circle. Look at that. More than 400 people detained. Who would want to live in Russia, bro? More than 400 people have been detained in Russia. Meanwhile, more than 400 people um, since the moment Mr. Navalny's death has been became public, according to the Independent Human Rights Organization, the arrests are half of which were made on Saturday, were made across 32 Russian cities. 400 arrests over 32, 32 cities. Look at the police. Look at the uniforms. Look at the helmets. Look at the visors. They mean fucking business, bro. They look legit, in it? <laughs> like guns, bats, pepper spray, but like, you know, bulletproof vest, that proof vest, I'm assuming, nice warm coats. Like, <laughs> these guys mean business. Like, you don't play games in Russia. You play games, you get your head caved in. Forget, you know, forget what happened to George Floyd. You, you, you think that's awful. They must like, for, even Russian, it's probably not even that lethal. It probably won't even go that lethal straight away. They probably just punish you slowly. If ever you see pictures of people in prison in Russia, one thing you notice straight away is that they, they are incredibly skinny. They probably feed them just about enough to keep them alive. It's not like prisons here where people go into a prison in the West and they become actually, they actually get fatter, right? <laughs> that doesn't happen over there. Over there you get, you know, things happen. Things definitely go a bit differently over there. So um, RIP Alexei Navalny, but the update here, um, according to the Telegraph, says Navalny's body was found with bruised, um, found to be bruised in the Arctic morgue. Let's read this one quickly. It says the bruised body of Alexei Navalny, the Russian opposition leader, has been found in the hospital morgue in the Arctic. So they finally got it now, right? The paramedic um, told the Russian authorities um, media that there were bruises on Navalny's head and chest when his body was brought into the Salek District Clinical Hospital. So supposedly he suffered from some sort of heart thing that let him collapse in, which is why he died. But now they're finding bruising on his head and his body that is probably, you know, similar to somebody getting hit or assaulted. <sighs> Such injuries described by those that we saw them appeared from seizures. Okay, they say, okay. The other paramedic said, the person conv convulses, they tried to restrain him, the bruises appear, 
They also said that he could also had a bruise on his chest that is still tried to resuscitate him and he died most likely from cardiac arrest. Russian prison officials said that Navalny died on Friday after falling ill during a short walk at the IK3, a notoriously brutal prison in the Russian Arctic. Navalny's mother failed to find his body in the morgue in Salik. Her, da, 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 da. If he did die of natural causes, like randomly, they would just probably release his body because it would have just done them a favour. Because for sure they're already planning to take him out anyway. But if he actually did die of natural causes, they will release his body a long time ago. The fact that they're not releasing his body is probably proof that he didn't die of natural causes and the Russian government have played a part in it in some regard. They need to ask Nina Kravitz what happened. Hopefully someone gets in touch with Nina Kravitz and finds out what she knows. <laughs> Maybe Nina Kravitz can call up Putin and find out what the deal is. Um, reporters said that no autopsy had yet been performed. They also said that two scheduled, sorry, two unscheduled flights from Moscow had landed on Saturday in Salek, possibly with autopsy specialists. The first jet landed about six in the evening. It was met by cars and the second one arrived an hour later. Russian observers said that the state autopsy specialists may have been flown in from Moscow so that they can deliver a death certificate that pleases the Kremlin. They also said that it was unusual to send the body of a dead prisoner from IK3 to hospital morgue as Navalny had been there um, rather than a municipal one. Navalny was the pictures most. So yeah, let's see what happens. Um, either way, RIP Alexei Navalny. Incredibly sad to hear of his passing, but of course not surprised when you consider how much of a serious um deadly lethal um authoritarian fucking vladimir putin is he really doesn't play no games he doesn't not like any opposition he doesn't like to be questioned really for his lack of a better term you saw a lot of that in the tucker carlson interview he almost had this he almost had this flipping um he almost had this look of um despise and he it's almost like he despised tucker carlson his, you know, his, his occupation as a journalist, he kind of, you know, looked down on him as if like, you know, how dare you come here and ask me any questions? How dare you make me justify the way that I kind of govern my country in any way, shape or form? It was really kind of interesting to see the contempt in his face as he was talking to Tucker. Yeah, I get it. Tucker Carson is a piece of shit. He's kind of, you know, easy to hate, right? In the Brendan Shaw way. But it, it was quite weird to see that playing out in real time. So um, RIP Alexei Navalny, really, really RIP to him. It's really sad to see um, that happen. And we hope, we hope going forward that this might be a change that Russia needs to kind of get things, you know, back into some sort of democratic way. Unlikely, to be honest. Um, that probably will only happen when Putin passes. And even then, there's no guarantee. There's probably somebody they're probably grooming underneath him to kind of take the reins and continue doing what he's doing now. So it's kind of looking peak for them. It really is kind of looking peak for them. So, you know, thoughts and feelings go out to Alexei Navarro and his family. Can't, un you know, can't begin to understand or, you know, try to figure out how they're feeling right now, bro. You're trying to you know, privately mourn your passing of your family and friend and then it's being blasted all over the flipping news networks. The government is running cover, hiding the body, all this sort of malarkey is happening. It's just, ugh, 